Hey everybody, welcome into my latest live broadcast. Today is Wednesday, February the 6th, 2019. And today I've got a little product review for you I think you're gonna enjoy. And we're gonna give people a little time to jump in and join us here. So uh, thank you guys uh, so much who, are, who have uh, jumped in before the video started. <laughs> So wonderful to see everybody. Give some folks here a quick shout out before it becomes a madhouse. William Burlingame, Russell Franzen, Seth Harris, Rappel 3, Jens Carlson, Thomas Carter, IZ, Z Hammer 223, Rare Apple 3, Frederick Lundholm, Pete Unwin, Gingz95, Mark Baggett, John Craig, Andrew Dufol, Craig Lilly, Gil Garcia, Bo Boone, hello everybody, welcome in, and uh, Micromage Repair, Stealth Mode, Stephen Boker, Strandberg, Tomas, Wes Walkthroughs, hey guys, come on in, come on in, grab a seat, we're going to get started here in just one moment, Thomas Carter's kicking things off with a two pound contribution, thank you so much Thomas, you the man. Manga 99 UK says hello. Joel Titmus says hello. Art Awesome, hello to you. Red Dragons contributed two dollars. Hey, thank you, Red Dragon. Peter Brooks says hello. Polestar 69 and Michael Lee, hello everybody. Oh, Bill Leatherman joins us on a live one. Hey, Bill and Colin Hilton. I haven't seen Colin in a few days. Good to see Colin again and Donnie Seeger. Hey guys, come on in. Come on in. Mm. Ah, it's a good Coke. All right. First and foremost, I got a package in the mail today, which isn't unusual, except I wasn't expecting anything. One of you, somebody out there, sent a very generous contribution to the channel. This is the Zoom H6 recorder. It's like a $400 recorder. And this is absolutely brilliant when I go on location to plug the microphones into this unit and, and let the audio record into this unit instead of into the camera for much cleaner audio when I'm on location. And I can't wait to use this. I've been wanting one of these for a long time. I would love to know who sent it though. There was absolutely nothing in the box that suggested where it came from. And uh, you know, I wanna give a proper shout out and thank you to whoever sent this. Uh, I, it might be a while before I use it. Unfortunately, I don't have anything planned off location until September, but it's not like it's going to go bad or anything. And, and uh, when I have some time, I can play with it and get it tweaked and, and optimized for the best quality sound. But this is, this is an amazing contribution and uh, no idea who sent this. So I want to just hold it up here for a moment and hopefully we'll, whoever contributed is going to join us so I can give them a, a proper shout out and give them the credit they deserve. It's, uh, it's a very cool and very useful device. I also want to tell you guys that uh, I got an email today from Eli, the computer guy. You guys know familiar with Eli the computer guy and I don't know if it's because uh, some of you have uh, emailed him my attempts at emailing him have not uh, I, I, I don't know I can't get through but apparently somehow some way got through and uh, Eli invited me to just do this one-on-one -on -one interview with him uh, hopefully we'll get that sometime next week we're still working out the details on that but I very much very much look forward to uh, talking with Eli. He's a, he's a pretty straightforward guy like I am, and he says it like it is, or at least you know from his perspective. And he and I uh, come from similar uh, backgrounds with regards to our careers, but I think we have a completely different approach. So I very much look forward to the discussion with Eli. Uh, I've been wanting to do that for a long time. So it was great to get that email and, and um, I'll, keep, I'll keep you informed on when that's supposed to happen. 
but uh, I hope it'll be one of very uh, of, of several more. I hope it'll be the start of something. I think Eli'd be a lot of fun to work with. It's no good if you're bringing somebody on who just wants to, you know, if you guys, if two people agree on everything, it's a very boring discussion, right? Because then one person's unnecessary. So I think it's important to have uh, people that are more or less equally matched with regards to uh, their skills and their career, you know, what, what, they're, what they spent years and years honing their craft. Put two guys completely independent of one another who have individually done it their own way and then, have, you know, put them in the same room together and talk about the different attitudes and perspectives that they each have. Uh, I think it'll be great. I, I'm very much looking forward to it. So. I'm really excited about it. This is my excited face. <laughs> uh, let's see, Let me jump through the chat here. got some folks uh, showing up now we got a little over 300 people in the chat so I'm about ready to get started here um, let's see Yeah, I, I very much wanted, would like to know who sent that, that recorder. I'm not exactly sure who sent it. Uh, you know, give them a proper shout out. Like I said, it's a, it's a heck of a contribution to the channel and, and it's something I've wanted for a very long time. So thank you very much, whoever that was. Um, today, I'm gonna talk to you about some really cool hardware that Silverstone makes. So you know Silverstone makes the computer cases, they make power supplies. In fact, they just sent me a uh, fanless, completely silent desktop power supply, which uh, I'll review here shortly. But today, today I wanna to talk to you about the MS-09, which is uh, an M2 a USB adapter. So this is uh, M2 SATA, it's an external enclosure and the idea behind it is it just replaces a flash drive. But unlike a flash drive, you can actually upgrade this. You can take the M2 drive out and replace it. So if your M2 drive fails, or if you want to upgrade it and make it larger, you just uh, remove four screws and the device opens up. And this is what it looks like on the inside. We've got the, the back cover. And then there's a uh, there's a switch that goes in there, right? That's for sliding the USB port in and out. And then we've got the main circuit board here, which looks like this. Switch rests in there. Your M2 socket is right here. Now, before we go any further, these are for SATA M2s, not NVMe M2 drives. Now, why anybody would put an NVMe drive externally doesn't make any sense anyway. You would basically need a Thunderbolt interface to achieve that speed. And it's a lot of money. It's twice the price. And then it would limit how many computers you could use it on. As a computer tech, I need a universal tool so that no matter what customer computer I'm working on, I can count on the fact they're all going to have some form of USB by this time. And so making sure that it's just standard USB uh, means that my tool can work on any machine brought in or that I go on site and have all my tools on a flash drive that is much more controlled, uh, cheaper in the long run. These devices cost about 
they're under forty dollars from Amazon, and uh, and like I said, I can upgrade it as M2 prices come down. I can upgrade that. A Gainz E95 just made a generous contribution of fifty pounds. Wow, he says put this towards the next giveaway. Uh, well, thank you very much, Gainz E95. And just so you guys know, um, if you do your contributions through PayPal, uh, contributions of twenty dollars or more. I recommend you go through PayPal because YouTube's gonna take 30% of anything that you give here. I guess I need to point this way. Anything that you give here, YouTube takes one third of it, about one third of it, and I won't see it for 30 to 60 days. I have no way to refund it. I have no record of it, no receipt. Uh, YouTube is not transparent about how they're controlling uh, the release of those funds, so I don't know. It's, it's a little difficult, so I don't wanna discourage the Super Check contributions but rather if you want to make a contribution of that size, if you use PayPal, they'll only take 3% versus 30. I get it right away versus 30 to 60 days. And I get a receipt with the option to refund. Should you change your mind or you know decide you don't like me anymore, I can refund that money, everything's cool. So, but regardless of that, thank you very much for supporting the channel and for uh, supporting the giveaways. This might look like the system yesterday, but this is the other system. Last night I just went ahead and did the exact same thing to it. Didn't make any sense to make the same video again. So that system last night, it got shipped out and that little laptop PC got shipped out. And now this one's ready to be shipped out. We're still looking for somebody who's a, what we're looking for is either a disabled vet, uh, particularly somebody who's given service to the country could be um, you know, police officer, disabled vet, anything like that, or perhaps you're on a fixed income and they're using a really old, outdated system. And we're asking people to nominate themselves. Please don't nominate anybody else. I don't care if you know somebody. I don't care if you're related to somebody who can use it. If they can't get off their butt to request it and you have to do it for them, these aren't people I'm interested in helping. I'm only interested in helping people who want to help themselves. So if it takes you to get them, then never mind, don't bother yourself because I'm not even going to consider it. So I need to talk directly to people who, you know, want to make some minimal step forward to improving the quality of their life and I'd be happy to send this to them and this is provided by you, the community, it's your contributions to the channel that make this happen. Not interested in gaming. Uh, gaming is an expensive luxury. What we're talking about here is helping people uh, be secure and safe online with a machine that's reliable, that can help them to get work done, uh, be able to just get on with their life. You know, these things, computers these days, you know, how do we live without them, right? So if they're using something older than Windows 7, it's dangerous to use, quite frankly. It's going to be very slow. Uh, they're going to just have problems with it. So we're looking to help out other members of the community. Like I said, particularly those uh, um, who serve the country, who are on a very limited income and would benefit you know, the, from a machine like this. And understand, no matter how bad you think you are, I can assure you there's somebody else worse than you. So you can uh, jump out in the chat and say hello. You can send me an email privately if you'd like. And we'd very much like to get this into the hands of the right person. That's very important. It's not that we're looking for anybody to take a commitment. I mean, that's easy. Uh, we're looking for somebody who, you know, has a string of bad luck, let's say, and we're looking to break that chain of bad luck and make something good happen. But they have to do it for themselves. You cannot do it for them. That's it. So, so if you know somebody, if it's parents, friends, coworkers, they need to speak for themselves. Um, that's the only real rule I have. And of course, it's got to be within the United States. So. Um, anyway, uh, that's what's going on with this. So this is the other, the second machine that I have and uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to find the owner for this. I got it all set up yesterday. It's ready to rock and roll. It's happy, but today it's, it's still out because I'm going to use it for testing these Silverstone devices. So once again, this string. It's a, uh, sorry guys, it's my new shirt. It's got threads that are coming off of it. See, it's got little, little pistons for buttons. All right, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> so this is what you get when you buy the Silverstone unit. 
And what you would do is you just open this up. There's a little screw right here and it can be moved into these other two positions. So it can hold three different sizes of M.2. Now the most common size of M.2 is a 2280. And what 2280 means is it's 22 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters long, as you can see here. It is what I call a gum drive. I've shown this before. We'll, we'll show it again for people that are new to the channel and, and haven't seen my, uh, my analogy. It's a visual analogy that requires a prop. Here it is. I got my, I got my prop right here. All right, so is this a storage device or is this a stick of gum? This one's crunchier. All right, so we got a, an A data 240 gig drive here. This is the SP550. It's a couple years old. I bought it because it was cheap back then. I still say A-Data is your best bet if you're looking for a bargain in storage or RAM. Consider A-Data. I think I'll spit this gum out because it's... Just needed it for the joke. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can order these on Amazon, among other places. I got links to these in the... Uh, in the video notes below the video, but I'm just gonna remove this little screw right here, like so. And then it's just like when it, oops, get that in a minute. Just the same way that it would plug in on a motherboard connector. We just slide that in there, right? And then that little piece I just dropped. It's a little brass standoff, and that's gonna go right under there. Like that. And then I just push that down, and it's gonna line up just like that. And I'm just gonna put the screw that I took out right back in there. It doesn't have to be super tight. It's just gonna hold that drive in this, you know, secure that drive into the, uh, to the circuit board. I'm just uh, struggling today. I'm gonna drop everything today. Okay, let's do this again. I'm trying to do it so you can watch me, but it's, it's important that the screw goes in straight. I'm trying to do that with a steady hand without dropping it. There we go. And so we'll just snug it up. Okay. And you see, no sp space is wasted. It's exactly it, what it needs to be as far as size goes. And then this uh, is gonna go back into here, like so. And then I can place the little switch back on top. It sort of has a little recess that it sits in. Just like, whoops. Where is it? Just like that. And then there's the lid, and the lid goes on. Like this. And there's four little screws. Uh, two screws here, two screws down here. And as you can see now, I've got a USB flash drive that's 240 gigs in size and it outperforms any flash drive I've ever seen. And it's cheaper when it's all said and done. It comes out to be less money for more storage that's faster and upgradable and replaceable. So I'm gonna just put these little tiny screws back in. They're really super small. Uh, this little screwdriver is magnetized and that's critical when you're dealing with these, these tiny screws are very easy to uh, to drop and to get lost because of their diminutive size. And that's all there is to it, just those four screws plus that, that fifth one that holds the drive in place. 
and you got yourself a flash drive. Now some of you may be saying, hey, I've seen this before. Well, you actually haven't, because we're going to take it another step. But first, I want to show you how it performs, what it looks like to the computer. And that's why I've left this machine out, because we're going to use that as our test bench. Now this machine is only USB 3, not 3.1, so it's, this drive isn't going to perform as good as it possibly could, but it will perform realistically, meaning when I go on site to a customer's location or a customer brings me a machine to work on and I need a flash drive to copy data to or from this right here, this is going to get it done. It's feeling a little stiffer than it normally does. I might have to just double check my work. Hopefully that'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is switch you over to this machine right now. So let's go over to this machine, which should be on. There it is. And I've got a flash drive plugged into it now because I was using my utilities disk to copy off the Crystal Disk Mark software. All right, so this is my standard 16 gig utilities flash drive from SanDisk. And you can see there's quite a size difference. If we put them side by side, you know, it's obviously quite a big difference, but also a big difference in price and performance. This is far more capacious, far, far faster, and like I said, upgradable and repairable, whereas this, you just send it in for warranty. If it's in warranty, that's all you can do if it breaks. And of course, you can't upgrade it. So let's plug this in. I will pick a USB 3 port. You see it's got a little activation light on it that lights up in blue. And I think I've used this in the past. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like I've got some files on there. But that's okay. I, I can't even remember what it is anymore. Uh, let's run Crystal Disk Mark on it. Let's choose that drive. And where do you see the performance specifications on this bad boy? It's very impressive. And of course, you know, we can put a 500 gig in there. We can put a one terabyte drive in there. I assume I could put a two terabyte drive in there, although I've never tried. And look at these speeds. Now remember, it, this is a USB 3.1 device, but I'm only into a USB 3.0 port, so we're not getting the full performance that this is capable of. So I want to reiterate that. So we're going to let this run. Uh, this M2 drive, like I said, I've, I've had this M2 drive for a couple of years. And I don't even think they make the SP550 anymore, the A-Data SP550. But I still buy A-Data drives, and it doesn't have to be an A-Data drive. It can be any SATA M.2, as long as it's a 2280 or um, there's another... Uh, I have to get my glasses to read it. The print is too small. It'll take a couple of different sizes of flash drive, uh, of M.2 drive, I mean. Um, yeah, it'll do 2260 or 2280. It works in Windows 10, 8, 7. Works with Mac 10.8.6 uh, or future release versions. This is the charcoal color, and this is the information I'm reading here on the back, which you guys still may not be able to read. You'll, you'll have as hard of a time reading it as I will. Finally, <laughs> level playing field. Okay. So there's some of you who say, well, that's all well and good, but it's just too big. Well, welcome in then. Let me just go full screen to the MSO9 Mini. So the MSO9 Mini is a smaller version of this device using the uh, 2242 size flash drives. Now, if you've never seen that, why do I keep calling it a flash drive? The 2242 M.2 SATA drive. Now, this one's made by a company called Dogfish, and they're a bit pricey. Uh, the, uh, the 2280 is the most common. That's the one everybody buys. But this one is, uh, I believe this is 256 gigs. And you'll see it's about half the size. 2280, 
2242, right? I think that's a 2242. So 42 millimeters versus 80 millimeters in length. Tony Wallows contributed $4.99. Hey, Tony, thank you. Let's just tune back in here. I'm gonna get the, this box opened up and while I'm doing that, we'll just take a look at what our specs are. You know, even the write speeds on this thing is fantastic. This is brand new, never used it before. And that's the little tiny flash drive right there. That's uh, smaller than a stick of gum, so I'm gonna have to find some other way to, <laughs> to demonstrate its size. It's got some documentation with it here, which probably says, oh, so they apparently they use these in a lot of ThinkPad model uh, machines, and so they're just warning you about some potential compatibility issues with that. That doesn't affect us because we're going to be putting it into this new enclosure. So this, uh, oh, I've got to cut the tape on this one. So remember, these are all brand new. Everything you're seeing right now with this product and this uh, M.2 drive is all untested. It's all being unboxed live on camera. So. What you see is honest and true. It's nothing scripted, nothing's edited. So keep that in mind as we watch going forward. So inside the box here, there's the box, we'll get rid of that. They've given us a little tiny screwdriver for some reason, which I don't understand. That's typically something that would come with the enclosure, not with the drive. Oh wait, this is the enclosure. Never mind. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, we've got some documentation in here for the enclosure, which I'll just set there. So this is again the MS-09 Mini from Silverstone. Look at those final numbers there, 431 and 417 on the read and writes. Very impressive. Uh, like I said, uh, be hard pressed to find a flash drive that can do that. I'm sure they make them, but uh, put this into USB 3.1 and run it and you'll see those speeds go up even faster. So this is how they ship the MS-09 Mini. It looks very much the same as what I just showed you, which was the MS-09. And the same, same design, same type of switch. Everything's identical. Let's eject uh, the other one here so we can put them side by side. So let me close, just remember those numbers. I'm gonna close this out and we're gonna eject that. It is particular about how you seat the flash drive. Uh, I'm going to keep calling it a flash drive. How you seat the M.2 drive is critical. If, it, if you buy one of these and you find it's not fitting right, you probably don't have it um, lined up correctly. So I'm sure if I take this back apart, I will see. That it, it just shouldn't be fighting me that much. It's kind of difficult. In fact, maybe, you know what, I'll address that in a minute. But So here's the regular MS-09. Here's the MS-09 Mini, if I can line them up, right? And then, of course, back to my flash drive again. Now, suddenly, it's just a little wider, but totally upgradable, faster, all the same benefits. Give me a second, guys. Well, I guess they didn't want to talk to me. Okay. I'm expecting a call, so I just wanted to take it to make sure. If it's something important, I'm sure they'll call back. So once again, I'm going to remove the four screws. We're doing the exact same thing, only it's just smaller in size. And actually, it's the same width, it's just shorter in length. 
And those little teeny tiny screws, be real careful that you don't lose those. Now, Silverstone sells these on Amazon and other places. I've got links to both of these products at Amazon. If you purchase from Amazon using my links, I make a small commission. You don't pay any more money, though. It's the same price for you regardless. So it's a way of showing support for the channel where it's not really costing you anything. And then, let's get this opened up. Same deal. We got the cover. Got the other cover and the switch are all part of that. And they are separate. Let's see, the switch is a separate piece altogether. And I'm just going to set all this down here, keep it all together. And then here, we've got a small screw on the standoff, and we can open that up. Take that screw off and remove the standoff. And now you see this is what the circuit board looks like. And so the M2 drive, which is just 42 millimeters in length, is going to go in there and it's going to work and operate <laughs> exactly the same. How it's just madness. The simplicity of it is incredible. So here we've got this brand new Dogfish branded M2 drive. Uh, finding the M2 uh, 2242s, like I say, there, there's not as much selection, but they are out there. I'm not quite sure why they did this. It looks like there's like a sticker that's going to peel up. Oh, looked like it was going to take the other sticker with it. This is important to have. Not. That's what that, that's what a 2242 M.2 SATA drive looks like. Like I said, mostly you're going to see these in tablets, in devices where they're really thin and, and, and small, and that's what these are made for. But that's not to say that's the only way they can be used. So here, we're going to place this exactly like we would in a motherboard. Motherboards support these too, by the way. When you see all those multiple holes, one of those is a 2242 hole. So you can use this, although like I said, they do cost more money. So I don't know why you would unless you had one laying around. And then we'll put the standoff back in, like so. Probably going to have to set this down before I drop everything. And I'm going to drop everything anyway. Okay, so we'll just set the standoff in there. That's a neat little project, you know. It's something you can do in just a few minutes. It doesn't require any special training or skills. Anybody can do this. And then we'll put that screw back in to secure the M2 drive onto the circuit board. Remember, it doesn't have to be super tight, just snug it up. And again, you'll see there's no spare room here. It is exactly the size it needs to be. And it seems I've installed it incorrectly. You can see there's a, the drive is not sitting straight. Now this isn't gonna hurt anything but it may not fit in the enclosure properly. There's a little groove on the standoff and that flash drive needs to go inside that groove and I think that's the same mistake I made on this one right here. So a really super easy problem to fix. In fact, uh, I've gone at this from the wrong side. The screw has to go in on the other side. So I've screwed this up two different ways. So the good news is you can get it wrong and it really doesn't hurt anything. So what I'm going to do this time is put that in the groove, then lower this down like that, and then it gets screwed in from the back side, not from the front, from the back. And that's what the instructions are for. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Although common sense should always win out in the end. Okay, now this is what it should look like. This is much better. And I, I imagine I did the same thing there, and that's why it's so stiff. But you can see now it's much more flush and level than it was before. So the screw goes in over here on this side. It doesn't go in from this side. And uh, so I screwed that up two different ways. <laughs> but no harm done. It's okay. 
then let's see then this will go in I think like this so that the switch is going to be right here on this side because if you're looking at it and you go well I don't know do I put it in this way or do I put it in this way it's pretty obvious the switch has got to be able to be exposed then we can take the switch itself and we can place that down here on the um, on the part of the circuit board where we took it from, where it was removed from. And then that's going to go right back on there. That's how it's supposed to work. And then this back plate can go back on it. And then before I put the screws on it, I can just test it and make sure that it that it works. It's see, I'm 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 binding up somewhere in there. I don't probably have the switch on correctly, so I'm just going to take a moment to correct that. Sometimes just turning something around the other direction is what it takes. I do wish this switch was all one piece, but it's not like it's something you're going to open up and mess with very often. And um, like I said, patience. Patience is important when you deal with this little tiny stuff. It is uh, very particular uh, as to how it goes together so that it operates smoothly and correctly. So another way I can go at this could be the other, other direction, which is I could place the switch down in here first. See, it doesn't even want to move. Let's turn it the other way. The other way is worse. So it's interesting that it's only got one direction that it fits in. It seems to lock into position. So let's try that. Just wondering if that has to go in first. Yeah. And then, we should be able to put the top back on it. Yeah, that's a lot better. All right, so let me just put the screws back in. Teeny tiny little screws. And my magnetism on the screwdriver is, seems to be uh, wearing, wearing off. All right, so we'll put that one in. funny it was it was magnetized really well a minute ago and now it doesn't seem to have any magnetic hold at all so, you know, suffer through it it's 
tiny little screws. Hey, now I can see. Okay. Yeah, this one's still real stiff too. So there's probably some other, something I'm missing with regards to, uh, the switch should be a lot smoother than it is right now. But for our intents and purposes here in testing it, I'd rather it was too stiff than too loose. And so let me just extend that out. And that's what that looks like. Now this will have to be partitioned and formatted Unlike the other one which was used, this one's brand new. So we'll just find a USB port here to plug it into. Again, we've got the blue light in the same place, very much the exact same thing, just cut down in length, that's all it is. And we'll go back over to this machine here. And what I want to do is go to disk management. So disk management, that's what I want. And there it sees the, uh, disk one, 238.47 gig. That's us, unallocated. Right click, new simple volume, click next, click next, click next. Uh, we'll format it and we'll just call it, uh, what we say it was, 256. We'll do a quick format. Next, finish. It just takes a moment. And it's good to go. Now, let's go ahead and run Crystal Disk Mark on that one, which is drive E, and let's see how it performs. Yeah, somehow in the way that I've opened these, uh, they're supposed to open and close smoothly. So I'm sure I have done something incorrectly. So while that test is running, I'm going to take this big one back apart and see. It's usually something pretty obvious. Now the performance on this drive is probably a little reduced because of its size. It's what I'm going to guess with that number of 289.6. Dogfish isn't exactly known for their performance, it's mostly a combination of a small size and capacity. But the performance isn't bad, although I do have flash drives that are faster than that. But it, remember, we're still in USB 3, not 3.1. Oh, I see. So on this unit, this separate piece, that's part of the switch is actually tacked onto the circuit board and the other one it kind of came off so I might have assembled that incorrectly and let's see did I put the flash drive I mean did I put the M2 drive in there correctly yeah I put it in wrong so that explains that I did the exact same thing I put this in completely wrong so I'm gonna correct that while we're waiting for this test to run But it's a good example of just how uncritical it is that it's not done with precision. You would think stuff that's this small is very particular about precision, and it really isn't. Uh, as you can see, it still works. It's just, you know, opening and closing it is a bit stiffer than it's supposed to be. But like I said, if you just open it up and take a look at it, you'll probably see what it is and feel stupid for it. <laughs> not noticing it the first time, because that's how I feel right now. But that's okay. It's no harm done. No harm done. 
So that being in there correctly this time, now that I know that that gets raised up and around that switch, when I'm done with the other one, I can open it up and fix it too. Uh, the beauty of live video is, of course, you do get to see the errors and uh, the mistakes, uh, the warts and everything, because this is more than likely what you would experience if you were to buy one. You wouldn't experience the polished video version. Oh, much better. That slides in and out with ease. Beautiful. Big, big difference there. So I think what I did wrong on the small one is I, there's a little frame that goes around the switch and I think I put that in upside down. And I think when I turn that around, that switch will open and close just as easily as this one does. I mean, you could leave it if you want it to be, you know, very difficult to open as a, as a way of discouraging others from using it or preventing it from falling open on its own. Although it shouldn't do that anyway, it wouldn't be that loose. So it's not critical that you open it up and fix it. But I am a fan of doing things right. And it's just four screws. So, you know, how lazy do you have to be to live with it when it's not configured right? And now there's just no friction at all. And it does, it locks in. It's not going in. It's not, you know, the switch is locked. So when you push the switch in, that's when it goes down and locks in equally. It's very unusual that we have a write speed so high and a read speed so low. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open it back up, make sure that was put back together correctly, and we'll retest it again. So I think I just want to stop this test at this point. We'll just hit stop here. And then uh, let's eject it. There we go. So I'll unplug this, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to open it back up. It's interesting that the magnetized screwdriver worked just fine for holding onto the screws in the other unit. I wonder if these screws are made from a different material that perhaps the, uh, the magnet isn't working quite as well to this, whatever these screws are made from. I would have thought they're made from the exact same material, but they're behaving differently uh, to the screwdriver. So I'm gonna open this back up and look at that little frame around the switch, which I'm pretty sure I have got upside down. Let's get you a big screen. There we go. So in here, what I'm talking about, um, no, it's not upside down, but it's interesting because it has little grooves cut out in it. And I'm not exactly sure where those grooves go. It should just sit down in the circuit board. Yeah, I think. Interestingly, it kind of gets in the way of the screw. I wonder if it was designed that way on purpose. Ah, that's better. And then the switch can go. Well, let's put it in here first. And then the switch. Switch will go right inside of it. And then the cover. Much less friction. Much, much better. Patience, patience, patience. Now I gotta get my glasses back out so I can see these little teeny tiny screws. Put those back in there. So like I say, you can buy any size M2 drive you want as far as capacity goes and just make sure that it fits the 2280, 2260, or 2242 physical size of the enclosure, depending on which enclosure you buy. And then you would uh, partition and format it if you haven't already, just like I showed you how to do just a moment ago. And you're good to go. You're ready to rock and roll. Oh, yeah. I did it right that time. So there's, there's absolutely no friction on that. It just 
opens very easily. And again, it's locked until you push in on that switch, and then it goes down. Let's plug it back in and try it one more time. We'll switch back over to the uh, desktop screen, and we'll go back to Crystal Disk Mark Portable, and we're going to run the test once more. Let's we'll see. I'm not quite sure what the read speeds are supposed to be on the solid state drive. I'm not sure that they have them on the box. I've never ever used a 2242 M2 drive before. So I don't know what the regular performance readings are supposed to be. Well, 300. It's pretty much about the same. It looks like for some reason the write speed on this model is faster than the read speed. It's usually the other way around. Not sure what's going on with that. But that's nothing to sneeze at. 300 megabytes a second. <laughs> it fits in your shirt pocket. You're good to go. And that's how easy it is. And let's see what I've missed in the chat room here. Tony said that he sent the H6. So Tony, if you sent that, thank you very much. I mean, that's, that recorder cost more than the computer I sent you. So it's a very generous gift and I appreciate it uh, very much. Um, we'll just let that test continue to run. Let's make sure I haven't missed any other contributions here. Uh, Tony Wallace contributed $4.99 twice. Thank you for that. Tony, for your contributions. And uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, my thanks over to Tony over at Silverstone for sending me these units so I can test them. I think they're fantastic. I, I just love these to death. I think this is much better than the other enclosure. The first time I used one of these, it had a, a cable that plugged into it. And, uh, you know, the unit was physically wider and longer. But I just like the control of it. I like the idea that you could swap the memory out of it and put bigger, faster memory in it. Uh, again, I want to emphasize going external on NVMe does not make any sense. It is a complete waste of money. NVMe drives cost about twice as much and you would need a special interface to be able to take advantage of that. At this point, this goes faster than your USB port. So what's the point of going any faster than the USB port you're plugging it into? And by going Thunderbolt, now you're limiting what type of computers you can plug it into. I don't know any customers, well, I'm, I know maybe a half dozen customers out of hundreds that have a Thunderbolt interface on them. And so as a tech, when I go out to service a computer or a computer is brought to me in the shop, I need a universal device I can plug into all computers. And that's what the U and USB stands for. Um, NVMe is really intended as internal storage because their speed limits internally are far greater than the speed limits externally with the exception of having a Thunderbolt 3 interface, which again, very rare. And you know, if you have a specialty need where you're just using it for yourself, I do believe NVMe enclosures are available. I'm not going to recommend them here on the channel because it is such a niche market. I can't imagine that more than two viewers out of the hundreds of thousands of viewers that I have would be interested in something that specific. But if you are, then you're smart enough to know how to proceed on your own. If you're one of those people, you certainly don't need to hear it from me. But for everybody else, this is regular SATA M2 drives. Don't waste your money on NVMe. When you're going to use it externally, it's a complete waste of money. And that's, that's that. And you can see the, the write performance for some reason is much faster than the read performance. I still don't get that at all. I'm going to let this test complete and then I'm going to test it one more time over on the streaming rig just to see if I get similar numbers because that's really weird. It's usually the other way around. If it was 380 on the reads and 300 on the writes, I'd say, yeah, that makes sense. But having 380 on the writes and 300 on the reads is very unusual. So 
I'm going to verify that by plugging it in over here to the streaming machine, which I believe does have USB 3.1, and we'll see what kind of numbers I get out of it once this test is complete. So if you uh, have any questions regarding the M2 SATA uh, USB enclosures, uh, please feel free to ask those questions now, and uh, I'll be happy to do my best to provide you uh, an answer. There's our final numbers right here. And I'm going to go ahead and close that window and eject this flash drive. Got to grab the right mouse for this. There we go. And then I'm going to plug this in, like I say, to the streaming computer and we'll see what kind of numbers we get. We'll just go right here. And let's see, go to my desktop. No, that's not what I want. Let's minimize that. And I want crystal disk mark, which I've got to grab real quick. Utilities, free crystal disk mark, portable version right there. And let's give that a run. Whoops. Got to make sure I select the right drive. There we go. <clears throat> so we'll go back over here. Let's see if we can do a display capture on this so you can see it. Yeah, so I'm still seeing the same numbers here, 305. Uh, I'm going to stop this test. And instead, I'm just going to do this row, because this is the only thing I'm interested in are the read and write speeds. So I'm waiting for this interval time right up here to stop. There it goes. And we'll just do the sequential. By clicking on this box, it'll run just these two tests only. And it'll be hap this will happen a lot quicker. So we'll just see what happens here in just a moment. Uh, yeah, this is the, what the desktop of the streaming computer looks like. You'll see I've got my CyberLink PowerDirector 16 on here. Cyberlink screen recorder, Google Chrome, the OBS Studio, the Stream Deck, which you never see me use, Camtasia 9. I've got a lifetime license for XSplit Broadcaster, the GeForce Experience icon, the Ryzen Master software. Pretty much just keep it all business. You'll see you rarely get the same numbers twice, but you should always be, you know, in the same area, you know, within a few bytes of uh, from test to test. You should hover right around 300 on here. And now it's going to start test one of five on the sequential writes. So these numbers is giving you the best of five here, and we're up over 400 on the writes. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. But I'm not complaining. It's good. Now, with that done, I'm going to bring us back up to, whoops. There we go. <laughs> Got to hit the right buttons. All right. Let's see if we have any questions in here. Uh, yes, uh, if somebody's claiming to meet me, you can actually go ahead and hide them from the channel. You can ban them, it's fine. Um, don't really want to give those people any attention. Um, they don't, because of the swatting event, let's just say that the more that they jump in, the, the better. Uh, just use your head, you'll understand. 
we, we really don't want that person to go away. We want them to stick around. The longer they stick around, uh, the, the, the easier it is to locate them. So uh, really something I shouldn't be saying out loud, to be honest. Uh, but if that person is that confident, God bless them. Let them in. Let them in because as a result of their actions, whether it was them or somebody else, uh, they have the attention of uh, certain people that are um, working. And so we're not going to really talk about it too much, but rest assured that that sort of behavior is being monitored by the authorities and watched very closely. So if somebody was smart, they would shut up and disconnect before they get caught. But if they want to continue thinking they can't be caught, <laughs> that's fine with me. <laughs> it's just fine with me. Uh, all right, let me look through. Like I said, we'll keep it on topic here. So we want to talk about the, uh, the M2 enclosures. Does anybody have any questions about the M2 enclosure? Yeah, if anybody comes on claiming to be Carrie Holzman, obviously my name is a different color. So if they've got a regular name, just hide them. You don't have to ask me for permission. In that case, you can hide, you know, ban them instantly. No problem. What are the reviews on these drives? You know, I haven't, I haven't looked at the reviews. I can tell you that I like them. So I don't really care what anybody else has to say, to be honest. Uh, it's like somebody re reviewing a movie just because they didn't like the movie. That means you're not going to bother seeing it to decide for yourself. Um, I can tell you Silverstone is a, is a very reputable quality hardware manufacturer. And I have no hesitation when I receive Silverstone devices with regards to customer support, warranty, or quality. Every company has a bad product from time to time, and it's the difference between a good company and a bad company isn't about the product, it's how they handle when they have a bad product. And so uh, I haven't had any bad Silverstone products, but I would say that I'm very confident and have peace of mind that if I had an issue with a Silverstone product, they would take care of me. That's how good of a company they are. Uh, when I put my name on something, you know, when a customer buys something for me, they're not buying Silverstone, they're buying Carrie Holzman's brand, right? So if I use a Silverstone case or a Corsair case, that's a reflection on me, so I take it very seriously. These units cost under $40 for one of these enclosures, and uh, then the flash, uh, the M2 drive, the M2 SATA drive is up to you. So you have a variety of M2 SATA drives to choose from in capacity, uh, and manufacturer that are all compatible and will work. All of them work, as long as they're M2 SATA and not M2 NVMe. Again, M2 NVMe plugged into USB doesn't make any sense. Uh, if you've got a car that can do 150 miles an hour and you're on the freeway, you can only do the speed limit. You can't go any faster than the car in front of you. So what's the point in getting a car that can do 250 miles an hour when the car you've already got you can't even go as fast as it's capable of. And similarly, why would you go with an NVMe drive, which will cost you twice as much money when it won't run any faster than a standard M2 SATA because the USB is your bottleneck. Therefore, forget about this idea of putting NVMe externally. It's just a waste of time and money. And uh, consider M2 SATA as your best value, best bang for the buck. And having a flash drive that's completely repairable in a way, right? Because if the M2 drive were to fail, not that I've ever seen one fail, but it's possible, you just swap it out for another one. Or if you decide you need more space, just swap it out for a bigger one. It's just that easy. Rain one full says, I love your videos. Hey, thank you.
what is the M2 drive that I used? So there's two M2 drives here. This is just an A-Data uh, M2 standard 2280 size uh, flash drive. I keep calling it a flash drive. I have got to stop doing that. Um, this is an M2 SATA SSD 2280. I don't think A-Data makes the SP550 anymore. And in fact, for what I paid for this a couple of years ago, I could probably buy one twice the capacity for what I paid. That's how much prices have come down. And this other unit, the small one, this is made by a company called Dogfish, which I don't know what I did with the box. Here's the box. Uh, Dogfish, when you look for uh, M2 drives that are the 2242 size, uh, Dogfish is one of the bigger manufacturers, one of the most common manufacturers, uh, one of the most uh, approachable, attainable manufacturers you'll probably find on sites like Newegg and Amazon. When it comes to variety, you'll see a lot of different manufacturers, but I think you're going to run into Dogfish over and over and over again because they seem to be leading the way with regards to variety in the M2 uh, 2242 size. This is my first experience with Dogfish, so I don't know, but they're all chips, so it, it's almost irrelevant who makes it as long as you've got a good uh, support if you need it, and I don't even know that. The specs on the back here is a model number, and that's all available uh, wherever, pretty much anywhere drives are sold. Hold on a second, guys. So I think I have another hang-up call which is too bad. I was hoping I'd get a scammer on the phone. Um, yeah. Let's see. I have a, a service that uh, blocks spam numbers. There's a service called Hiya, H-I-Y-A, and it's a free application you can put on your smartphone, and it identifies spam callers and whatnot and gives you the ability to block individual callers. And so that gives me the ability then to also mark these callers as spam, so when they try and call anybody else, if they're running the Hiya app or other apps that share data with it, uh, their call won't go through. So uh, this is a way of stopping abusers by identifying them and sharing that in a, a community, a pool of uh, people who then you know, share information with each other so we don't get interrupted by morons you know, who are trying to get away with something or be clever or scam ya, rob ya. But I was hoping that there would be a, a scammer on the other end of the line and we'd have an interesting video today, but no such luck. But the day is still young. All right. Just top that bad boy off right there. So I got 551 people watching. Why don't you let me know where you're watching me from? Where, what country are you in or what state? Get, put it there in the chat room if you would. I, I enjoy that. Kerry, what could cause that huge difference between read and write speeds? I, you know, at this point, I don't know if that's normal operational procedure for that particular flash drive. Uh, I'd have to do a little research into it, but honestly, at 300 megabyte read speed, that's incredibly flat, fast for a USB flash drive. There are flash drives, you know, like these uh, SanDisk flash drives, these will read about that same speed. They get into the 300s, maybe even low 400s but they're also quite a bit of money. I think this one is uh, 256 gigs, USB 3.1, and it sells for around uh, $85 versus, um, take one of these enclosures for 40 bucks and then for another $50, put a 500 gig. Now for $10 more, I've got twice the space. 
the same is not true on the 2242 drives. The 2242 drives do cost a bit more, but in time, who knows, those prices may come down uh, to match for all we know. It just depends on the manufacturing, supply and demand, et cetera, et cetera. But it's nothing for me to worry about. It, it's, it's performance is nothing to sneeze at. It's still very respectable performance. And I'm sure it's not the enclosure. The enclosure can go much faster than that. It's got to be something to do with the drive. Shane Schellenberger says he's watching from Phoenix, Arizona. Mark Baggett watches us from Massachusetts. Rich Robbins says he's outside my back door. Yeah, it's like, like my dogs wouldn't, uh, wouldn't tell me that. Charles watches us from Northern California. War One is watching in Finland. Marco Berdens is watching in Holland. Dragonfly 305 in Edinburgh, Scotland. Gary McGraw is in North Texas. JC4CJ7 Craig is watching us from Kentucky. Noodles T. Bagret from Kent in the UK. Matt's Rickardson, it says hello from Sweden. And Tony Camarina is joining us from Rialto, California. Natterman joins us from Charlotte, North Carolina. Richard Angeline in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Richard Prescott, London in the UK. Art Awesome. Hampton Roads, Virginia. Eddie Milney from Geordie Land in the UK. Oh, good old Geordie. Uh, Northern Ireland. That's Gainsey95 with that generous contribution earlier. Tromic is joining us from Austria. Donnelly Herney is in Corpus Christi, Texas. Robert Jones, Charlotte, North Carolina. Thomas Carter in the UK. Zeller says it's cold, cold, freezing rain in Toronto, Canada. Franklin Adams, Washington Bothell, Washington, Unforsaken Gaming in McMinnville, Tennessee. Catherine Anna Hauserman joins us from Columbia, Carte, I don't even know how to say this, Carteg, Tarkeg, Tar, Cartagena, Cart, from Columbia. And Patrick Manny joins us from Ohio. Franz B says hello from San Diego. Ox00111, Fort Collins, Colorado. John Rice. Joins us from Long Island, New York, and Colin Beck from Newfoundland, Canada. Badge Holder is watching us in Norway. Justin Sapp says Pennsylvania. Michael Mancini says New Jersey. NJP Vlogs and stuff joins us from Toma, Wisconsin. Gil Garcia, North Texas. John Wilson, also in Texas. Edward Green in New York City. Arto Resenin in Finland. The Stealth Mode joins us from St. Augustine, Florida. Patrick McDonald in Stockport, England. Floyd's Ghost says hello from Colorado, and Ole Peterson says hello from Denmark with Lubomir Angelov from Bulgaria. All over the place. Colin Hilton joins us from the UK. Red Dragon joins us from Oklahoma. Magna Menga 99 UK is in uh, the UK. Michael Ram is in Bremen, Germany. Scorpio M joins us from Lithuania. Bernt is a Norwegian 21-year-old IT student. Welcome in. Roosevelt, welcome. Watches us from Louisiana. Vance Stone Jr. is in Southwest Florida. Jim Anderson, watching from Pittsburgh. Yvonne uh, Marshall, still working on that last name. Chateaugay, Quebec, Canada. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce some of these names, so bear with me. Uh, what else we have? Uh, Degsy McDegface is in Dublin, Ireland and Bodie McBoatface. Dan Reed watches us in Texas. Irving T is in Marseille. Michael Lee watches us from Denver, Colorado. Uh, Gary Kane from Long Island. Paul Wright in Kentucky. And uh, Seth Harris in Colorado. Bo Boone says he's in Tupelo, Mississippi. That is where Elvis Presley was born. John Craig says greetings from the beautiful country of Yorkshire. 
Rick Ash joins us from Cottonwood, California. Donnie Seeger's watching us in Florida. And Dixie Champagne says it's pronounced Cartagena. Oh, Cartagena, I should have known that. I've, I've heard that on the news all the time, Carta, Cartagena, Colombia. Thank you for the spelling that out for me. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Got a job in fixing PCs because of you, says Siab. Very good. That's always good news. Vern says hello from Kansas, and Raymond Torson is from Burlington, Wisconsin, and Speedy C's watching in the UK. I think I got everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching. All right, so again, a huge shout out and thank you for the Zoom H6 Handy Recorder. Uh, this, this, is going to be fun. This is a, <laughs> people want to know what I do for fun. Getting something like this and getting it all plugged in and configured, that's fun for me. I can't wait. I can't wait to start using this. This is just buttons and dials and lights. What more could you want? A few more buttons, dials, and lights. But they're not just there for looks. They do something. That's the difference than RGB, you know, that actually does something useful. It conveys vital information about the status of your recording. They're not just there to go ooh and ah. Marhe Shal and Sha Ogay are the pronunciation for Marhe Shal. Marhe Shal. Yvonne Marishal. Okay, thank you. Negan says, welcome from Hungary. Ah, my ancestors are from, on my father's side, I think, are from Hungary. My mother's side, Portugal. Chateauguay, Chateauguay. That's the name of the city. Chateauguay in Montreal. I have to look again. I have to see it side by side. I, I, your text now is, <laughs> it's so far up. Yvonne, if you can write that one more time, right where you're from, and let me try and pronounce it now that you've given me the, the enunciation, I'll, I'll give it another shot. Am I Italian at all? No, I was raised Jewish, and Jews and Italians often get confused a lot. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a lot of similarity in behavior with Jews and Italians. Um, but I do think, I keep asking, you know, there's got to be some Italian in me because I am drawn to the, the Italian language. seems really easy for me to understand. Uh, even It's very similar to Spanish. You know, Spanish you say gracias, and Sp in Italian you say grazie, uh, buongiorno versus uh, bonjour in French. It somehow just connects with me in a way that I, I do wonder myself. Uh, I love Italian food. But no, apparently no Italian at all. <laughs> uh, IZ says, greetings from Dusseldorf, Germany. Are there any products from Germany you would like to have? Wow, a BMW, a Porsche, an Audi. Oh, you're probably talking about tech products. Um, you know, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I can't think of anything at, at the moment. Ah, there's Yvonne's text. So, Chateauguay, Quebec, Canada. Yvonne Marichal. It looks like Chateau. That's what it looks like, Chateau Gay. Edgar says he's watching me from work. Don't get caught. Jimmy's, Jimmy's looking for a little attention. He goes, how about me? How about me? How about I have a little attention now? Look at your face. Oh, that's a cold nose. My goodness. You were outside, weren't you? Look at his teeth. Look at those teeth. Oh. I am your antivirus. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's okay, boy. I got the trolls. It's okay. But I'm hungry. Trolls are delicious. Okay, I get it. I know. It's okay. You're a good boy. 
I'm gonna rub your hair the wrong way. And then, now shake off, shake it off, shake it off. Get all those cooties, there you go, get those cooties off. Good boy. All right. All right, so I just wanted to wrap this up. Uh, again, a super shout out and thank you to Tony over at Silverstone for sending the products for review. And coming up soon, I can give you a little sneak peek at the fanless, completely silent Silverstone power supply. And I can't wait to use this in a build because this thing is a monster. The Silverstone Nightjar NJ600 it's a 600 watt, zero dBA, meaning it makes zero noise, modular power supply, no fan. It runs completely silent. Eighty plus titanium. Titanium. Power efficiency doesn't get any better than that. And this thing is heavy, 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 heavy. So whatever I'm putting that in is going to weigh quite a bit. <laughs> I'll tell you that, it's going to add quite a bit of, uh, of weight. So uh, I can't wait to test that out. And again, one more time, thank you to Tony. Everybody say thank you to Tony over at Silverstone. Yes, there is no fan, no fan. They say that should do a fanless build. I would love to do that. I would love to do that. What does that power supply sell for? The NJ600? I don't have a clue. I haven't even gotten so far as to look that up, but I can look it up right now for you. Let's take a look. See what Amazon's selling that for. That's the uh, Silverstone NJ600. Looks like it's about $213. $213. And Amazon only has two left in stock. Let's grab you a link and I'll put that in the chat room for you guys. There you go. Yeah, it's expensive. But it's, you look at any 600 watt power supply with a 80 plus titanium rating, and I think you're gonna find they're all gonna fall in that $200 range right in that area. Some will be a little less, some will be a little bit more. It just depends on uh, the manufacturer. What's the warranty on this, by the way? Let's take a look real quick. I'm sure Silverstone has a great warranty. Specifications. No customer reviews yet. They say it only weighs 3.93 pounds, but it seems to feel heavier than that to me. Uh, manufacturer warranty, where is it? I don't know. I don't know. I do see other sellers are offering them at $199.99. Um, I wonder if the warranty's on here. Sometimes they don't list the warranty on the box because they may sell it in numerous countries and different countries have different warranties. I've seen that happen before. I do think that they should boast their warranty. It should be something they brag about. I do get a little worried when I don't see what it is.
Hmm. Mean time before failure is over a hundred thousand hours at twenty five degrees Celsius. Very technical information. These are my kind of manuals. I like that. I don't see anything about the warranty though. Hmm. We got some zip ties and uh, Velcro wire management ties. And then the power supply itself. Uh, they had to do the velvet bag, didn't they? You, you just you just had to do it, Silverstone, didn't you? You had to put it in the velvet bag. It's a little longer than a regular size power supply, but not much so, maybe just by an inch or so. I'm gonna save this for video. I'm not gonna open it up just yet. So we'll save that for a future video where we can properly unbox it and show it off. Just don't know what the warranty is. So I'll, I'll reach out to Tony. I don't know, did anybody find it in the chat? Secondhand model said it has a five-year warranty. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. I do think that they should have, a, they should be boasting their warranty. I think I've talked to Silverstone about this before. Although I talked to so many manufacturers, it, it may not have been Silverstone. But they definitely need to boast that warranty. It's important when people spend that kind of money that they're gonna get some peace of mind. I also picked up another toy. No, it's not really a toy. I'm gonna call it a toy because I'm a nerd. But um, Tony, who I sent the computer to, had sent me a $50 Amazon gift card and I used that to help pay for this. This is a Blackmagic uh, Ultra Studio mini recorder which has a uh, Thunderbolt interface on one side and HDMI and BNC connector on the other. And the reason I purchased this is when I go to Michigan in September, I don't want to have to take the whole streaming rig. I want to take my Dell XPS 15 laptop, which has Thunderbolt built into it. And then I want to plug, you know, just the cable is 20 bucks. This whole thing is about $150 for this and it's built like a brick. It's heavy, it's thick gauge steel. Don't drop it on a toe. It's heavy. But what this should enable me to do is run, I think I'll get the cable tomorrow, plug my camera, this camera right here, into the HDMI input here, and then run the Thunderbolt cable from here to the laptop. And ideally, that can be my portable streaming machine. Wouldn't that be great? And if I am doing an interview with somebody, I could run the H6 Zoom recorder back there uh, to record the audio in much better quality than what the camera does. So I'm really anxious to see if this is going to work out. So I'll be doing a streaming test uh, in the coming weeks when I get everything set up and configured on the laptop, which only takes a couple minutes really. I just have to find the time to do it and see how well it runs. Obviously, I don't, I'm not going to have multiple inputs like I do now, but when I go to Michigan, I don't want to have to take the streaming computer, a monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, the cabling, if I can just use this and go into that Dell XPS 15, this could be the answer that I'm looking for. And uh, I, hope, I hope it'll work well. I, this is the first black magic item I've purchased. They tend to be for people that are professionals or really high-end video equipment. Their cameras are very expensive. So we'll see if it's worth all the hype. I was impressed that the documentation that this comes with is on a 500 megabyte SD card that they include with the unit. I've never seen that before. I'm not sure that I like it. I mean, a 500 meg SD card, a DVD holds more than that. Why not just throw a DVD in there? But uh, whatever, it's all good. It was interesting. And it's just another example of you get what you pay for. Like I say, this is not cheap plastic. This is a thick gauge steel. I don't know if you can get an idea how thick that steel is, but um, 
it definitely has a feeling of quality about it. Now the only question is, will it provide me smooth video output streaming to YouTube? We're going to find that out here very soon. So I always have a lot of projects happening at any given time and there's two of them right there. The fanless power supply I've got to test, the mini recorder I've got to test, and there's more stuff coming. Karen Blackburn says all Silverstone products have a minimum of two year warranty. And the minimum warranty period on their retail power supplies is three years. And uh, some products have five years. Yeah, that all sounds right to me. IZ says Seasonic has a 600 watt power supply, which is also passive in titanium and has a 12 year warranty. What does that cost? Alan K says, good evening from Scotland. Good evening, Alan. Hundred thousand hours of mean time before a failure equals eleven point one years if it was running twenty four seven and you never turned it off. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that ought to get you covered to your next upgrade. <laughs> you do get what you pay for. Okay, does anybody have any other uh, technical questions with regards to anything we've talked about today? Uh, external storage, the power supply, or this Black Magic. The power supply and the Black Magic box, I really don't know much about. Uh, I can tell you what the, you know, I got them. Uh, well, Tony sent me the power supply from Silverstone. This was purchased from Amazon. I'm very much looking forward to testing it. Uh, I hear lots of good things. Uh, the cables are very expensive. Just a regular uh, Thunderbolt 2 to, th to Type C Thunderbolt 3 basically is a $20 cable. So that's just holding me up. Tony Wallow says, You're welcome for both. So, yeah, huge shout out and thank you to Tony. We're very generous and I appreciate it very much. And, and I'm excited. This is, this is my idea of fun. I can't wait to get this hooked up and start playing with it as well as the recorder. That's the best video game ever. Roncav53 says hello from Cebu, Philippines. Once again, just want to give you guys one last opportunity. If you have questions, this will be the time to do it, or we're going to wrap it up if nobody's got any uh, related questions. Godfrey says, Carrie, if you want to visit lobsters on me, visit where? Sounds like uh, somewhere back east.
Micro Center has been putting the A Data 480 gigabyte solid state drives on sale for $40. Wow, what a great deal. What a great deal. Floyd's Ghost has contributed $5. Thank you, Floyd's Ghost. Have I ever had a clone solid state drive fail? No. No. And like I said last night, I just did the same work again to the second uh, Dell Optiplex uh, 3020 where I've got the, uh, the A-Data SU 630 uh, QLC SSD in here with the Fenlink adapter. And we're still looking for people in need that we can donate this machine to. I also have two other machines that need to have homes and I will talk about those after I get rid of this one. We'll see what else I've got. It's just a win-win-win for everybody. It gets it out of my house, which is a win for me, so I don't have to listen to my wife complain about it. It helps somebody out, which is a win for them. And uh, in many ways, uh, it helps the community in general because it's because of you that these giveaways are possible. I can't afford to do this on my own. And so you guys should feel the same thing I'm feeling when you know we get these responses from people who are so grateful and have made this you know brought some light into their life where they're just surrounded by what feels like darkness and when you can show somebody that kindness it's amazing how that in and of itself is its own reward but sometimes there's even reward on top of that we'll wait and see but uh, karma has this weird way of just leveling and balancing things out and it's just amazing, absolutely amazing, uh, the community we have here and I'm so proud of it and I'm so proud that you guys are a part of it. I don't even know the right words to express it, but this is how the internet should be used. You're not for harassing people, not for voicing your political opinion, there's a place for that and it, that place is not here. This is a place of community. We're all human beings on this earth at this time, and we should help each other out because it just feels better. Out of our own selfishness, it just feels better to help than to argue. It feels better to have friends than enemies. It is its own reward, but more times than not, there's still rewards on top of that which we just haven't experienced yet. But you remember I said it, you wait and see. You'll see. It doesn't necessarily happen 100% of the time within a time frame that you would expect it to, but it happens more often than it doesn't. Just wait and see. In the meantime, if somebody is a disabled vet or has given service to the country in some way and has uh, found themselves, I don't know, having a series of uh, bad luck, whether whatever it is, and you feel like uh, this computer could be very beneficial to you and, to, and not to your friends and not to anybody you know, but to you directly, you need to let me know and uh, try and get you try and get you some a nicer machine, more secure, faster, more pleasurable to use, and who knows could open doors for you. I'm waiting on one part to start the judge's computer. So the judge has ordered a second computer from me. I've got another machine that before I start it, I'm waiting on one part. And then uh, I mentioned Mitch, my good friend Mitch Morrison. He's got a machine he wants to build with me. And I think we're waiting on one part for that one. So all three builds are all waiting on parts and that's why I haven't started them yet. But I still have plenty of other products to review and, uh, and other projects to complete, so there's no shortage of work that still has to be done. But you can look forward to those coming very soon. 
Uh, Joseph Panariello has contributed $2. Thank you, Joseph. Once again, um, the, the, we're not looking to give the computer to somebody's relative. We're looking for that person to step forward themselves. So if you think that you know somebody, you need to encourage them to reach out personally. Uh, they can send an email to me, explain the situation, and we'll, we'll just uh, put it up for vote later on and let the chat room, do, you know, I don't make the decision. The chat room makes the decision. But I want to reemphasize this is, it is not intended for anybody to speak on behalf of anybody else. I have no interest, and I want to emphasize this, I have no interest in helping people who don't want to help themselves. They have to exert just the tiniest amount of effort, okay? And if they're not willing to do that, I, I can't be bothered, right? They're, they want to just sit there and have stuff delivered to them. That's how rich people live. You know, that's just not right. It's absolutely not right to sit there and expect other people to take care of you. Um, this is just not the way I was raised. It's not what I believe. Uh, the world owes you nothing. So for those people, if you know somebody, you tell them to reach out to me directly. Please, and thank you. I am just waiting for any other technical questions. Once again, just the last opportunity if, if people have any technical questions for me before I wrap it up. <clears throat> and I'm just scrolling through the chat right now. If you're looking to build your own computer and you're just not sure what parts to buy, Catherine here in the chat room, Catherine Anna Hauserman, she loves putting parts lists together for people and she knows the right questions to ask. She doesn't just go, oh, you want a gaming computer? Here you go, because a parts list like that is worthless. They have to understand what games you're gonna be playing. You know, you're gonna be playing it in 4K or multi-monitors or do you plan to? What's your budget? What country do you live in? Catherine has all these questions that she asks to put together a parts list that actually is customized to your needs, expectations, and budget. It's pretty rare to get anybody to do something like that for free. And you can reach out to Catherine here in the live chat or uh, look her up on Facebook and send her a private message there. And all she asks for in return is a thank you, right? That's pretty much all you have to do is say thank you. And that's just part of the community that we're building here. And, and uh, hopefully we'll see lots more uh, people joining us and, and have this community grow with, with you know, amazing people, all like-minded and amazing people together. Imagine the power we have as a group and the influence that we have as a group as opposed to the lone wolves and criminals and thugs and bullies. We outnumber them. We just aren't uh, coordinated. We, aren't, we haven't established a, uh, a solid community. So that's what I'm working on, and that's why. There's far more people in the world that are good than are bad. And uh, as word gets out, and as the channel grows, I expect to see this community grow many times over. And I, I expect to see the awesomeness of what it means to be human and how we can help each other continue to blow my mind with the kindness and generosity that exists once we get organized. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not seeing another, any other questions, so I think I will uh, wrap it up today. Uh, 
Uh, there's some questions about parts. Nobody can answer. So, you know, the reason why lots of parts exist is to meet lots of different people's needs. There's no way anybody can recommend any part to you without specifically understanding how you're going to use it. And I mean specifically, not just gaming, what games, at what resolution, what version, with what operating system, on how many screens. Uh, there's a lot of questions that have to be asked. Otherwise, the answers to your questions, you might as well just flip a coin. It, it'll be completely worthless to ask anybody, should I change this or this? Or should I get this or that? Or which is better, this or this? It's a completely pointless exercise to ask questions that are very subjective. Uh, people have to understand you. They have to understand how you're going to use the part, uh, what your future plans are, and uh, what games or what processes, uh, in what way are you going to use the computer at what settings in order to really give you information that would be of any use to you. So for that, you know, those kind of questions are best uh, asked to somebody who was willing, like Catherine, who's willing to ask you all of the follow-up questions in order to provide you with an answer that's worth something. But you can go and pretty much decide this yourself by, you know, if there's a game you like to play, go to the forums of that game and ask the people in those forums these questions and they can help you because they know that game platform and, and you know, whether it's more CPU or GPU intensive for, if that's the most important thing to you, right? And likewise, if you're video editing, what video editing software are you using? What version? What kind of videos are you making? Are they long videos? Do they have a lot of edits and transitions? Are you rendering in 4K or 60 frames per second or 360 degree video or 3D video? Uh, what software are you using? What version of the software? All of that matters with regards to what hardware you should match along with knowing what your budget is and what your expectations are. So it's not as easy as just walking in and going, you know, should I use a spoon or a fork? I mean, it just depends what your personal preferences are and what you're eating. It's very difficult to answer, uh, to give a meaningful answer without all of that extra information. The answer you'll provide it is basically worthless, completely meaningless and just a waste of time for everybody involved um, for those kind of questions. But if you have technical questions, if you want to know something technical that I can answer, something that's factually based and not opinion based, I'm your guy. Oh, I see Stephen Boker has joined us. Lotto win. Hey, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah, okay. So it looks like... Uh, looks like there's no other questions here. Daniel wants to know if there's any reason against enabling secure boot. Uh, the problem when you enable secure boot is if you have to boot to a rescue disk, you know, to do some recovery, you, you're not going to be able to do it. With secure boot, it really complicates any sort of repair to the operating system that's not bootable. Uh, on the other hand, by enabling secure boot, it prevents you from getting a, an infection that can cause the operating system from getting uh, unbootable, but that rarely ever happens. Most infections these days are malicious software, not necessarily viruses, and so that sort of fix is a problem that doesn't need to be solved anymore. So there's no reason really to enable secure boot. There's a a number of consequences to it. Now, if you're making image backups on a regular basis with something like a Cronus, you know, as long as you can just recover from it and plan on skipping the repair, that's fine. You know, you can work around it, but it, like anything else that secures, it also can lock you out. And that's what's job, right, is to keep people out. Well, it'll keep you out. And uh, when you want to get into it, when you need to repair it, something like Secure Boot will make that an exercise of very frustrating futility to try and get through that. It, it can be done, but it is much, much more difficult. So since Secure Boot doesn't really offer you any security at all, honestly, based on the fact that these viruses that used to come out just aren't out anymore. They just don't write them like that anymore. It seems like Secure Boot's like completely uh, it, it solves a problem that no longer exists. It just was too late to the game. So for that reason, I never enable it. There are industries where it has to be enabled. There are industries where there are laws that require them to have encryption and secure boot and things like that. 
But if you're in one of those industries, you have an IT department and they will already enforce these rules. It won't be something you'd ask a guy on YouTube. So if you have to ask uh, for that, then you don't need it. I guess that would be the, the good way to explain that. Um, it's an interesting question. Nobody's asked me that before, so uh, thank you for asking that. If you like the video, you can click that little tiny thumbs up button that's underneath the video and that just tells the creator of the video you like to see more content like that. If you like a creator, you can hit the subscribe button and then there's a little bell icon and if you hit that little lines around the bell appear and that turns on notifications so that you'll be emailed or notified anytime new content is posted or the creator goes live. So those are tools that you can take advantage of to alert you to things of, uh, if you want to be alerted to them. Likewise, if you uh, don't want to be alerted, you can always unsubscribe or just simply hit that bell icon to turn the notifications off. Is there a way to test an onboard network card? Uh, well, yes, there is, but I would have to uh, I, I would have to see it myself. But one of the simple ways to test is to just grab an, um, a, a network card that you can slap into a spare slot on the motherboard and see if that resolves your problem. That's one of the simplest ways, and so that's why sometimes fixing things yourself doesn't make sense if you've got to buy a bunch of parts until you've figured it out. When you take it to a repair shop, it's their job to have all these parts on hand to be able to properly diagnose it. It's faster and costs you less money. But that being said, if you want to go at it yourself, uh, just adding a, a secondary uh, network card, a PCI Express card, slap it into the board, see if that resolves your problem. And then you can choose to just keep that as your solution and disable the onboard or send the board back to the manufacturer if it's under warranty for replacement. John Wilson says, Carrie, I'm going to be sending you something next week for a giveaway. It'll be coming by UPS. All right, John, thank you. We'll... Can't wait to see what that is. Kelly wants to know if I still have that hard drive in my freezer. I do, yeah. All right, guys. So I think that about wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, of course, to uh, Tony Wallow for all of his contributions and the recorder. Uh, thank you so much, Tony. Floyd's Ghost, uh, Joseph Panariello, uh, Gainsey95, Red Dragon, and Thomas Carter. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel for your contributions today. To all my friends in blue with the wrenches, thank you guys for uh, nipping those trolls in the bud today. I think it was just one troll just signing in under different names and uh, like I said, the good side of that is the people that need to be watching are watching and um, um, I'm always a little tickled that somebody would be that stupid. <laughs> so, you know, let them come in and let them say what they want so that way um, everything they do just narrows it down to who they are. So that's all very helpful. They don't even realize how much they're helping me. So in the meantime, for everybody else watching, if your name's not in blue, I'm, I hope one day to make it blue. Uh, the people in blue don't have to do anything specific. It's just a way for me to acknowledge because there's so many people who watch the channel and I have a terrible memory. So when I see somebody's name in blue, I know they're a friend of the channel. They're, they're a supportive community member. And I would love for everybody's name over time to be blue, that everybody becomes supportive part of the community. So. Again, thank you guys for, uh, for being there, for, for watching the channel. And thanks again over to Tony at Silverstone for sending the products for review. And uh, links to everything I talked about today are in the video notes below the video. That's gonna wrap it up for me. Thank you guys so much. I will see you all again uh, very, very soon. Until then, bye for now. Mm -hmm.